Today, nearly six billion mobile phones are in use around the world. People are clogging the radio frequency spectrum with a deluge of voice, video, and data traffic. For mobile phone use, global positioning, national security, public safety, commercial navigation, critical infrastructure management, and much more. How can emergency, public safety, or even routine mobile phone calls be supported when frequencies become completely occupied? The U.S. Office of Science and Technology Policies Unleashing the Wireless Broadband Revolution is searching for a solution to this urgent technology gap. Fortunately, INL researchers have invented a breakthrough technology called Wireless Spectrum Communications that delivers a proven, robust solution. Unique, it simultaneously transmits identical multiple signals on multiple frequencies to receivers in order to avoid frequency spectra that are being used or jammed. By identifying and avoiding occupied channels, WSCOM ignores those channels and successfully delivers the desired signals to its receivers. In this portion of the video, we will compare the results of our prototype filter bank multi-carrier spread spectrum system to another receiver based on the matched filter output. The system based on the matched filter output is equivalent to a direct sequence spread spectrum system. The advantage of this is that it allows for a direct comparison over the same operating conditions and hardware setup. First, our system setup. We plot 70 MHz of spectrum centered at our center frequency of 2.48 GHz using our signal analyzer. The RF front end we are using is an EDIS USRP daughter board. This board outputs pilot tones across the ISM band. These are the tones that you can see to the left and to the right of our received signal spectrum and our system does not use them. For clarity, we have saved a trace showing the outline of our signal in yellow. This trace is from a previous measurement, and we keep it showing as a reference as to where our signal lies in relationship to the interference during our experiments. The received signal that we obtain at any given time is shown with the cyan trace. This would represent our system plus any interference which is present. We will perform experiments and observe the resulting constellation diagrams and streaming video for qualitative changes. During these experiments, we will display the constellation diagrams and a video player corresponding to the two transmit and receive systems. The left diagram and player correspond to the filter bank system, while those in the center were obtained using the direct sequence system. And as a baseline, we provide the video on the far right which represents the same video streaming over a cabled Ethernet connection. The three experiments will verify the effectiveness of our system in eliminating or mitigating partial band and wide band interference. In the case of partial band interference, we expect the filter bank system to outperform its counterpart due to the optimality of its maximal ratio combiner. This is one of the fundamental advantages of our system. Whereas for wideband interference, both systems have a moderate level of robustness due to their processing gains. This robustness is a feature commonly shared by many spread spectrum systems and is sometimes referred to as operating beneath the noise level. Our first experiment demonstrates the robustness of the filter bank system in the presence of partial band interference. For this experiment, we use our signal generator to create a relatively strong interfering signal that covers several subcarriers. This signal is then swept through the spectrum that our system utilizes. Here you can see the partial band interference that we generate. Now watch as this interference enters the spectrum occupied by our signal. The filter bank system adapts the maximum ratio combining weights so that the interference has negligible effect on the constellation, whereas the direct sequence system relies on a sort of averaging effect. The result is that when the partial band interference is high enough, the system fails, as we observe here. Now we can jump to the segment of video where the interference is leaving the spectrum occupied by our signal. Notice that the direct sequence system recovers when enough of the interference leaves its spectrum. In the second experiment, we inject a wideband interference that covers our entire signal spectrum. Because of the processing gains of both the filter bank and direct sequence systems, this interference can cover the entire band while still recovering our data. We start with our system transmitting and receiving without interference. Then we turn on the interference at a very low power level. You can see the sides of the interference outside of the bandwidth of our signal spectrum. Now we increase the amplitude by increments of 5 dBm until our signal spectrum is completely covered 
and the direct sequence system ceases to function properly. Notice that our system is also close to failure. This is because the processing gains in the two systems are in fact equal. The maximum ratio combiner gives a slightly better result in this case as it accounts for the frequency selectivity of the channel. In the final experiment, we create a strong level of wideband interference which we sweep through the spectrum utilized by our system. This way, we can see the partial band interference increasing with time. Watch here as the interference starts to cover more and more of the signal spectrum. The direct sequence system begins to fail when less than half of the spectrum is occupied. The filter bank signal only fails when nearly all of the available spectrum is occupied. This is because the interfering signal is strong compared to the processing gain of our system. When this happens, both the filter bank system and the direct sequence system will fail. However, watch here as the filter bank system quickly recovers when only a few subcarriers are again available for its maximal ratio combiner. From this result and the results of the preceding experiments, we conclude that the filter bank system is far superior in suppressing partial band interference compared to its direct sequence counterpart. It was shown that the filter bank system is able to endure significantly more partial band interference while still achieving successful communication. The purpose of this demonstration video is to demonstrate our underlay control channel coexisting with an overlay data channel. Both channels will be streaming video and voice. Here is our experimental setup. We have our underlay channel transmitting audio and video data while sensing the spectral activity for interfering systems. When available channels are found, these are communicated to the overlay, which is reserved as a data channel only. The underlay thus directs the communication of the overlay channel. In our setup, we have the overlay transmitter transmitting, and then the overlay receiver is also connected to an RF splitter which splits some of the signal power going to a spectrum analyzer. This allows for a real-time update of the spectrum activity and allows us to see what the overlay receiver is sensing at any given time. Now we describe our video demonstration. The software front panel of the overlay channel is shown in the upper right hand corner of the screen. This system is streaming video and audio via UDP. The video stream is displayed in the lower right hand corner of the screen. The underlay control channel is also streaming a video, which is shown in the lower left-hand corner of the screen, while its software front panel is in the upper left-hand corner of the screen. The spectrum analyzer is occupying the bottom center of the screen and represents the spectrum seen by the overlay control channel's receiver. We leave the spectrum showing so that the viewer can see the activity in the spectrum as the overlay control channel changes frequencies and updates are made. We operate over a 25 MHz bandwidth centered at 2.48 GHz. As we are operating in the ISM band, other systems are plentiful and present possible interference to our overlay and underlay systems. The spectrum analyzer has been configured with an averaging trace which shows the continuous activity of the underlay in yellow, and a peak hold trace that shows the packetized activities of the overlay as well as other systems accessing the same channel bandwidth in cyan. Here you can see the interference in the cyan. This is other systems that are accessing the channel before we have even turned on our system. Now we begin transmitting with the underlay control channel. Now we turn on the underlay control channel receiver. As you can see the video begins to stream. Now we turn on the overlay transmitter and receiver. As you can see now, the overlay transmitter and receiver is streaming. Keep an eye on the spectral activity and watch as the overlay channel jumps from band to band within the channel. These channel assignments are accomplished by looking at the sensing information provided by the filter bank. And this concludes our video demonstration. We have shown the coexistence of an overlay data channel and an underlay control channel and the feasibility of using these systems together. Unclogging the radio frequency spectrum for mobile devices bridges the existing technology gap, permitting more use of the available spectrum. WSCOM addresses the immediate dilemma threatening emergency response, disaster relief, and routine mobile phone use. However, INL's wireless spectrum communications also offers potential solutions for communications in the U.S. military, global positioning systems, space and aerospace communications, management of critical infrastructure like water and power systems, 
vehicles, and other consumer electronics. 